Ladies and gentlemen, announcing the arrival of the Honourable Dato Sri Muhammad Najib Tun Abdul Razak, Prime Minister of Malaysia and Patron of World Islamic Economic Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, may we please request for you to be upstanding to welcome our VIPs for today. And of course, our Honourable Prime Minister is accompanied by the Honourable Tun Musahitam, Chairman of WIEF. Forum Foundation, as well as Tan Sri Ahmad Uzi Abdul Raza, Secretary General of the WIEF Foundation. Also, like to welcome Dato Lee, uh, Deputy Minister from Miti, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. You may kindly be seated. Very good afternoon to all of you today, and welcome to today's very exclusive press conference with, of course, our Honourable Prime Minister of Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to see all of you once again and we hope that you have had the chance to explore the various programs and activities that have been lined up for the 11th WIEF. We also hope you have found it insightful and empowering and of course overall an invaluable experience. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it gives, gives me great pleasure right now to invite the Honourable Tun Musa Hitam, Chairman of World Islamic Economic Foundation, to say a few words. Tun? Well, uh, good afternoon. I didn't expect this because this is the Prime Minister's uh, press conference. <laughs> uh, but uh, let me thank the Prime Minister for his kind acceptance of meeting the press here at uh, two functions uh, this afternoon. One is the press conference about the WAF. One is to witness uh, some uh, signing ceremonies, I think, which follows after this. All I can say uh, before you is simply that so far, it does seem like this 11 WAF is going to be successful, as indeed based on the enthusiasm as well as the presence of so many uh, representatives of the business community from different parts of the world. The registered number of uh, uh, delegates is something like 3,000 plus members. I've got the exact figures here of the latest one. And that uh, the registered members con consist of 3,176. That is of, as of about two hours or so ago. But that figure represents not only those who are in the hall, but other participants. There are young boys and girls who are participating in our what we call Mocha Fest. There are also other subsidiary activities like the exhibitions in the SME pavilions. There are also the uh, role players who are present. In fact, it does represent something like 100 countries. They come from 100 countries uh, of uh, participants here. And I think this is something which uh, the WIF to begin with is proud of, which I think I'm very proud to say that this being held in Kuala Lumpur, it is also significant for us, as indeed I would like to take the opportunity of thanking the Honorable Prime Minister for his uh, unstinting support, if I may put it that way, all this while. And it matters a lot that the government uh, does uh, uh, give its fullest uh, cooperation and fullest uh, assistance to us, and that is one of the reasons I think that we are as successful as it is. But it is difficult to measure success purely on figures. Success has to be measured by what I would call to be the happiness index. <laughs> this is about life generally, happiness index. Here it's more relevant, happiness of attending the WIEF. That index has to be measured, and only those who are present will be able to indicate to us that index. I suspect, maybe because I'm the chairman, people say, oh, it's such a good conference, but I suspect that happiness index is very high, Mr. Prime Minister. I hope that uh, happiness index is also catchy onto you, so that you will also say that your happiness index is also reasonably high, High, which makes us work harder, inshallah, for the future of the WEF. With those words, I thank the Prime Minister for his presence, his patronage, and his uh, kindness to be able to give us this press conference. Thank you, sir.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Tun Musa. Next, it is with great honor that we now invite the Honorable Dato Sri Muhammad Najib Tun Abdul Raza, Prime Minister of Malaysia and Patron of WIEF Forum, to kindly address us. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Tun Musa Tansi Fuzi. Uh, I'd just like to reinforce what Tun Musa said. Uh, first of all, um, uh, there is very clear evidence that the uh, WIF is a globally recognized forum. That's one. Number two, the success of WIEF since its inception back in 2005, we have brought it to another level. Uh, in terms of uh, participation, um, people from more than 90 countries have registered, and that means uh, government leaders, uh, business uh, captains of industries, SMEs, uh, NGOs, um, women, youth, from Muslim world and the non-Muslim world alike. They're here participating in this forum because this forum acts as a bridge, a bridge between the Muslim and the non-Muslim world so that we can strengthen the collaboration and cooperation uh, between all nations. As you know, we face uh, very trying times, uh, but this forum will allow us to examine uh, new possibilities uh, how we can deal with the current challenges. Uh, the theme of this conference is about SME, about building national economic resilience. Uh, but at the same time, we've always given special focus on issues relating to Islamic finance, for example. And you can see you know, the growth of Islamic finance uh, to some extent, it can be attributed to the role of WIF. For example, London now has uh, issued a second uh, Islamic sukuk, and the first one was apparently was informed me to me by one of the state ministers, British state ministers, was 14 times oversubscribed. So that's an indication that you know the alternative business model, uh, alternative to conventional financing, i.e. Islamic finance, is gaining traction uh, in places like London. And you know Luxembourg has started it, and a few other centers as well. So that was on the back of London hosting WIF. So that's a, a measure of success. Uh, then uh, we've always also emphasized on Halal industry. Now, halal is big, as you know. It's a few trillion dollar business, and that is growing uh, in size. Now, specifically, we talk about entrepreneurship development, women, and youth. And there's an awful lot of interest in how we can empower women and youth. Uh, you, the, the speeches you heard this morning, as well as uh, in the course of my conversations with them, uh, they want to know uh, the Malaysian way, how we have developed uh, youth, women, uh, micro, uh, micro enterprises, and entrepreneurship in general. So the success of uh, WIF is that it is apolitical. Uh, it's not caught up in the political Islam. It's talking about how we can use economic cooperation as a vehicle, as a medium for us to create uh, more wealth, ensure sustain, sustainable development and equitable development, as well as closing the gap or bridging the gap between the Muslim world and the non-Muslim world. So I think if you talk in terms of how far we have progressed overall in terms of the uh, overarching objectives of WIF, I would say we have attained much progress uh, in terms of uh, a happiness index, if you like. I'm always very happy to attend WIF, 
but then I'm partisan because uh, I'm very much involved in it. Uh, but I think if you look around, I think people, a measure of success is the, the enthusiasm of countries to host WEF. That's also another uh, uh, criterion, if you like. Uh, and um, the next round will be held in Jakarta, and after that in Korea, and so forth. So it's never a lack of uh, countries wanting to host WIEF because they see the value of hosting WIEF. So I think uh, uh, there is much to be said about uh, how far WIEF has progressed, and uh, I'm so glad that uh, Malaysia is driving this as part of a contribution uh, to the global community, as part of a contribution towards uh, achieving sustainable and equitable growth. So thank you. Thank you so much, Honourable Prime Minister. Members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to open the floor for our Q&A session. But before we begin, I'd like to kindly request that all members of the media please uh, refrain from and keep to the topic of the day, which is the 11th World Islamic Economic Forum. That's our focus point today. So please refrain from um, other non-relevant questions. As you are all well aware as well, the World Islamic Economic Forum Foundation is all about building bridges through business. So let's open the floor for questions. Please uh, raise your arm as well as state your name and the media you represent before asking your question will come around with the mic to you. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Dr. Sri. My name is Samisha from Channel News Asia. Earlier in your speech, you mentioned how Islamic economies were particularly resilient during financial crisis. So how relevant do you think Islamic principles and uh, the Islamic economy model is today, given our current financial and economic situation? And how is Malaysia perhaps an example? Uh, what can we learn from Malaysia as a Muslim-majority nation and any lessons that can be learned there? Thank you. I think ever since the um, global economic crisis, 2007, 2008, I think there's been a sharp uh, demand for alternative uh, economic and business model, uh, specifically um, uh, financial models that um, reduces the level of speculation. I think conventional model has that inherent weakness. And um, into a kind of a genuine partnership, in other words, uh, you share the risk and you share the profit. And uh, interest rate should not be the basis of uh, the cost of funding. So Islamic finance has gained a lot of traction. In fact, um, you'd be surprised. In Malaysia, more non-Muslims use Islamic finance than Muslim. And that's an indication of uh, how widespread the, uh, the um, support and acceptance of uh, Islamic finance has been. So we are delighted about that, and I think Malaysia being the leader, uh, not only in terms of uh, issuance of sukuk, as I mentioned in my speech this morning, but in terms of the whole plethora of uh, supporting uh, services, if you like, uh, the ecosystem to enable Islamic finance to thrive can be found in Malaysia. Uh, the, the most, the leading institution for the training of uh, Islamic finance in CF is hosted by Bank Nagara here in Malaysia. Then um, if you talk about the entire range of um, Sharia compliant products, financial products, they are here, they're available in Malaysia. So. Um, we are, we can, without blowing our own trumpet, we can declare ourselves as the leader in terms of Islamic finance, and we can offer that to the world. In fact, we've done that because more than 50 countries participate in INSEAF, for example, and uh, the numbers are growing every year. So that's an indication of uh, what Malaysia uh, can contribute uh, to the global economy.
We have our next question, please. Yes. Hello, I'm Mike is just behind you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Hello, Your Excellency. Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Miss Bayat. I represent the Worldfolio. We are a media partner. We produce the magazine about uh, Islamic finance. I have a question. Um, I'm based in Iran now, and I'm very surprised that I feel very alone. Is there any Iranian here? <laughs> uh, there's a very large Iran Iranian community in Malaysia, <laughs> but they're not here in this room. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that, that's my question. They're very large, in fact, uh, and uh, most of them are in our universities. Yeah, students, yeah. And why not at the event? Well, then they're not here because they are not part of WIF, but they are um, studying in our universities, uh, postgraduate students, large numbers of them. Thank you. I'd like to move to our next question, please. It's from Egyptian uh, deputy, this uh, yes. senior editor from Egypt. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, this is El Said Hani, deputy editor in chief of Al Gomoria newspaper. It's a daily newspaper. Please, what is the difference between WIEF and the Davos? Thank you. And what is the difference between WIEF and the Davos? And Davos. Oh, Davos. Thank you. Well, the Davos Thank you. World, world Economic Forum is uh, very, very different from. from uh, WIF. Maybe Tun Musa should answer this as, as the chairman of WIF. I don't know. Um, well, I know. <laughs> Not that I don't know. And let me put, try to put it as simple as possible. I have been to Davos, if I may say, during the days when I was a big shot, <laughs> leading the Malaysian delegation three times, actually. But very simply summarized, Davos, very elitist. Anybody who wants to be anybody wants to be that. The name. Uh, the name of it, everybody writes on that, and even companies, big ones. We are much more realistic, we are more simple yet relevant in terms of the interest of the ummah. Ummah means the communities, the reality of the situation of communities, especially in Muslim countries as well as other developing countries. That is a very important relevance. We deal with the smaller people who really need the most assistance and most attention. Not that I say Davos does not pay attention, but the big difference is there. So I will stop there. Maybe the PM will, will also explain it a little bit more <laughs> on that. Yes. Well, I've also attended both. Um, WIF is a much bigger forum, for one. Uh, it's certainly <coughs> very, uh, don't, don't quote me publicly, but it's quite expensive to join <laughs> WIF. And uh, there's some corporations that simply say, you know, we can't afford it, you know. Uh, but it's huge, it's big, and uh, you have to be selective, you have to attend the, 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 the sessions that you have interest in. You cannot attend every single uh, session because there's so many things running at the same time. Um, it is broader in terms of the, you know, the topics that they cover. Uh, whereas uh, WIF is more, I would say, has a niche market. Uh, it's specific. Uh, it is smaller, but it is uh, more intimate uh, in terms of its participation and in terms of uh, getting to know people who participate in WIF. So you have that, you know, balance between uh, one forum that's uh, that's fairly large, I would say. The other one is much more compact, uh, but both has its own, uh, uh, what do you call, um, objectives. And uh, I think WIF has been recognized as a globally important forum. Uh, and it will continue to be so, but we have no intention of competing with Davos. I think the world can afford Davos and can afford WIF. Yes, for our next question. We'll take one last question after this, so yes, please proceed. Yeah, 
uh, Siddesh from Gulf News. That's the UAE's largest selling newspaper. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you uh, for your insights on the World Islamic Economic Forum. Uh, could you give us, uh, I'm sure you must have had discussions with the different head of state uh, who are present here. What has been the discussion so far with them and, and any details that you want to share with us? Uh, we, we had lunch and you know, we, we discussed um, some of the uh, current issues, but um, the leaders seem to be quite focused on the theme of the, of the um, forum, which is uh, small scale SME micro enterprises, uh, women, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, how we can, uh, we talk about uh, uh, regionalism, open regionalism, and so forth. And some of the um, challenges facing them domestically, um, the experience of Bosnia, for example, what they had to undergo. Uh, and um, you can see the, uh, the countries that participate are countries that were driven by conflicts, but they have recovered. And, and now they're forging ahead. In Bosnia, you have Cambodia, you've got Rwanda. These countries were mirrored in very, very serious uh, internal conflicts. Civil war, serious civil war. But they managed to turn around the country. So I think that, that, uh, that goes to show the um, um, importance of uh, peace, stability, which they said that's important. And also the, the um, governance and institutional building. And that's not to be, um, you know, given less importance. You need to, to ensure good governance and strong institutions that go beyond individuals. I think that those are the lessons that uh, we could learn from the experiences of uh, those countries. And the consequences of conflict go beyond I was attracted to the point made by uh, the president of uh, Bosnia Herzegovina when he talked about serious brain drain. You know, more than 70%, 80% PhD uh, graduates are in America, for example. They're not in Bosnia. They need it in Bosnia. They're not in Bosnia. Why? They fled the country. So you can see the effect of Syria now, conflict in Syria, Iraq. Where are they? Qualified people. You know, they are. Uh, in a small uh, boats, in a very uh, um, dangerous waters, if you like, literally trying to migrate to another country. And um, they are there because they are afraid for their lives. And this is a consequence, will be felt for generations to come because the qualified people are not where they need it. So the consequences of conflict once it starts, the, the consequences go on for a long, long time. We'll take uh, one more question. Yes, please, at the back. Hello. Uh, my name is Hamid Mujahid. I'm from the state of Palestine. Uh, His Excellency, uh, uh, Prime Minister of Malaysia, uh, Dr. Najib. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, as an Islamic world, uh, if we talk about united and currency between the Islamic Islamic countries, making a united a unite currency between the Islamic world, do you think that uh, is important to be discussed in this forum uh, to improve and develop the economic of the Islamic countries? One currency, you mean? Yes. I don't think so. I think uh, I think that is. Um, quite remote, the idea of a common currency amongst the Muslim world. I don't think we should even try to go down that path. As you know, even EU, you know, the euro is, uh, was at a point of uh, breaking up at one time. So it, it's not a feasible option, but what we need to do is to increase the trade, the intra-trade between Muslim countries. I think that uh, it's tremendous scope for us to uh, leverage on our Islamic connections to increase uh, trade, investment, and economic business linkages. That, I think, 
uh, should be the way forward. Uh, by the way, um, please allow Malaysia to win against Palestine. <laughs> we, we are playing football against Palestine. <laughs> we, we, we lost 10 nil to UAE. Very, very, very embarrassing. <laughs> we hope we won't lose as badly. <laughs> okay, last question. I have to go. One last question. One more question. Okay. Signing ceremony, okay. Okay, sure. I'm Santosh from Gulf Times, Qatar. Uh, recently, uh, there was a move by the BRICS nation to have a uh, mega bank. So do you think that uh, Muslim countries should join or unite to have uh, such a mega Islamic bank? Um, there's been talk of that. There's been some attempt to establish a global mega bank, but it's not materialized yet. I think... Uh, there are some challenges to put together, you know, in a very serious fashion, a global, a mega global Islamic bank. But I think uh, uh, effort should continue. Uh, but I think uh, there are some serious uh, challenges uh, to materialize, to, to make it happen. Because so far it's not happened yet. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. We'd like now to move into the next event of the day. May we please request the Honourable Prime Minister of Malaysia to remain on stage to witness the exchanging of the MOUs that's going to happen shortly. And may we kindly invite the Honourable Tun Musa Hitam, as well as uh, Tansri Ahmad Fuzi, to take their seats down here at the, the VIP row. At this juncture, I'd also like to call on stage Dr. Li Chi Leong, the Deputy Minister of Miti, to join the Prime Minister on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, we now begin by inviting on stage the representatives from Johor Biotech Park. And they are Encik Mohammad Nur Salam, Head of Subsidiary Tentu Teguh Sendirian Berhad, as well as Encik Wan Amir Jeffrey bin Wan Abdul Majid, Chief Executive Officer of Johor Biotechnology and Biodiversity. And to represent the Halal Industry Development Corporation, we'd like to call upon its Chief Executive Officer, Datuk Sri Jamil bin Bidin. This is a collaboration to signify and formalise the strategic partnership between Johor Biotech Park, JBP, and Halal Industry Development Corporation, HDC, for HDC to give full support for current JBP submission for the 350 acres of Halal Hub and Halmas certification. Congrats and thank you gentlemen. We move on to the next MOU exchange and for that we'd like to invite Datuk Sri Ibrahim Haji Ahmad Datuk Sri Ibrahim Haji Ahmad Badawi, Executive Chairman of Dewina Trading Sundrian Berhad, as well as Dr. Bernard Tan, Director of Lancho Longma E-Commerce Technology Limited on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, this MOU is established for Lancho Longma e-commerce technology to assist in importing halal food into China on behalf of the Wina Trading Sundian Berhad.
auspicious day indeed. Congratulations. Thank you, gentlemen. We move on now to our next MOU exchange. And for that, I'd like to invite on stage Professor Dato Dominic Dr. Lau, as well as uh, who is a technical advisor of SQC Management, Sundar Berhad, as well as Madam Fang Chun Yan, the advisor at Lancho Longma e commerce technology. Ladies and gentlemen, this MOU is established for Lancho Longma e-commerce tech to appoint SQC Management, Sundaran Berhad, as the main service provider for halal certification consultancy and training in all of Northwest China. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for this MOU exchange. Thank you, Madam Fang. Thank you, Professor. And now we move on to the next MOU. We are pleased to call upon the representatives of Medini Iskandar Malaysia, Sundran Berhad, its chairman, Tuan Haji Jamil Hajar Abdul Mutalib, the chairman and its managing director and CEO, engineer Kyril Anwar Ahmad. And representing Telkom Malaysia Berhad is Group CEO Sri, uh, Tan Sri Zamzam Zairani Muhammad Isa. We also like to invite on stage uh, Mr. Massimo Migliolo, the Intel, Intel Sec Sundran Berhad um, CEO. Ladies and gentlemen, this MOU is a joint venture between subsidiaries of Medini Iskanda Malaysia, Sundian Berhad, and Telcom Malaysia for the provision of ICT related services as part of Medini's objective of developing Medini into a connected and sustainable city. Thank you and congratulations, gentlemen. And for our final MOU for today at the MOU Exchange, we'd like to call on stage Dato Haji Abdul Malik Awang Kachil, President and Chairman, Board of Trustees, Malaysia Islamic Economic Development Foundation. And we are also indeed an honoured to invite His Excellency Dr. Ahmad Muhammad Ali, President of the Islamic Development Bank Group, to the stage for the MOU Exchange. This collaboration, ladies and gentlemen, is a joint working arrangement in the contribution of economic development based on Marcos Seed Shara. Both parties recognize that there are many potential areas for supporting the implementation of this new level of the Islamic economy, uh, including but not limited to research, knowledge, capacity building, sukuk, Islamic management courses, entrepreneurship development, Islamic media hubs, scholarship, Islamic ISO, and a lot more. Thank you, gentlemen, and uh, congratulations to all. Also, a very big thank you to our Honourable Prime Minister, Dr. Sri Muhammad Najib Tun Abdul Raza, for witnessing the MOU exchange and for gracing this afternoon's press conference. And thank you to Dr. Lee as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of today's proceedings. Before we take our leave, I'd like to echo the words of Honourable Tun Musa that the forum will be exciting, it will be empowering, and it will be colourful. So we look forward to all of your coverage of the forum over the next three days. And members of the media from near and far, it's been a pleasure having you with us today. And we thank you for your support. We do hope uh, you have a memorable and enriching experience right here at the 11th WIEF. And to our media friends from abroad, have a pleasant day in Kuala Lumpur. If you need any assistance or any information, please do not hesitate to approach any of the um, WIEF officials that are present all around here today. Thank you and have a great day ahead.
Tschüss, tschüss. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, we need to make way for our next press conference. Uh, and therefore, if you are involved in this one, please do take your seats. And if you're not, um, then um, kindly do make way for others to take their seats. Um, and uh, please do continue conversations uh, outside of the press conference hall as we need uh, to be on time for the following item on our agenda today. Thank you.